Hello friends, welcome to this video session. The topic we are going to study in this session is the distribution of electrons in orbits. We also know it as electronic configuration. In the previous video, we saw that the protons and neutrons in an atom exist in its nucleus and electrons revolve around the nucleus in well-defined orbits. Let us now see how electrons are distributed in different orbits of an atom. Bohr and Burry introduced some rules for the distribution of electrons in different orbits. 1. The maximum number of electrons present in a shell is given by the formula 2n square, where n is the orbit number or energy level. Therefore, the maximum number of electrons in the first orbit or k shell is equal to 2 into 1 square, that is 2. In the second orbit or l shell is equal to 2 into 2 square, that is 8. The third orbit or m shell is equal to 2 into 3 square, that is 18. The fourth orbit or n shell is equal to 2 into 4 square, that is 32. 2. The maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the outermost orbit is 8. 3. Electrons are not accommodated in a given shell unless the inner shells are filled. That is, the shells are filled in a stepwise manner. Atomic structure of the first 18 elements is shown schematically here. We have learned how the electrons in an atom are arranged in different shells or orbits. The electrons present in the outermost shell of an atom are known as the valence electrons. We also know that the outermost shell of an atom can accommodate a maximum of 8 electrons. It was observed that the atoms of elements having a completely filled outermost shell show little chemical activity. In other words, their combining capacity or valency is zero. Of these inert elements, the helium atom has two electrons in its outermost shell and all other elements have atoms with eight electrons in the outermost shell. The combining capacity of the atoms of other elements, that is, their tendency to react and form molecules with atoms of the same or different elements, was thus explained as an attempt to attain a fully filled outermost shell. An outermost shell, which had eight electrons, was said to possess an octet. Atoms would thus react so as to achieve an octet in the outermost shell. The number of electrons gained, lost or shared so as to make the octet of electrons in the outermost shell gives us directly the combining capacity or valency of the element. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium atoms contain one electron each in their outermost shell. Therefore, each one of them can lose one electron. So, they are said to have a valency of 1. Can you tell what is the valency of magnesium and aluminium? Absolutely correct! 
it is 2 and 3 respectively because magnesium has 2 electrons in its outermost shell and aluminium has 3 electrons in its outermost shell. But if the number of electrons in the outermost shell of an atom is close to its full capacity, then how do we determine valency? In this case, valency is obtained in another way. Let us try to understand it by an example. For example, the fluorine atom has 7 electrons in the outermost shell and its valency could be 7. But it is easier for fluorine to gain 1 electron instead of losing 7 electrons. Hence, its valency is determined by subtracting 7 electrons from the octet and this gives you a valency of 1 for fluorine. Therefore, we can say that an atom of each element has a definite combining capacity called its valency. In this video, we studied the distribution of electrons in orbits. In the next video, we will learn about atomic number and mass number.